Good morning and welcome to the start of week three of Spookopolathon. So if you've missed the first two weeks, I mean it doesn't super matter, it's mostly just vlogs and how I'm feeling about the books I'm reading, so you can start wherever you feel like. But last week was definitely much more interesting of a vlog than this week will be. <laughs> it is Monday, I took a week of vacation last week to go dirt bike riding and hang out with some family in southern Utah. It was a blast and so much fun. I finished up The Left Hand of Darkness. I read Skeleton Key. I got a good chunk of the way through The Sun Also Rises. I did not read much of my audiobook, How to Stop Time, but I will get there. So in this vlog, what we will be doing is following this work week, as well as this weekend, where I think my husband and I are just gonna stay home. So it should be a pretty chill vlog, because last week was a lot of chaos. As far as reading, I am expecting to finish The Sun Also Rises hopefully today. I only have 60-ish pages left, so I could knock this out in an hour if I would dedicate the time to do it. <laughs> I need to finish the audiobook version of How to Stop Time by Matt Haig because I only have five days left on my loan from the library. And then if I can finish this today, Hopefully I can get a good chunk, if not finish, my next read, which is While Idaho Slept. Uh, this is an arc of an upcoming true crime novel about the University of Idaho murders that took place in November of 2022, I believe. It's fairly recent-ish. This book should... Hoping not cover too much of the actual murder itself, but more so the investigation of how they caught him, because it is kind of an interesting story. They had to kind of chase him across the country, ended up finding him in Pennsylvania. I am excited to kind of get some more knowledge of that, as I will probably be keeping up with this case for as long as it goes. But yeah, so that's probably what we're going to cover this week, and I'm looking forward to it. So I will check in with you guys at some point. Okay, it is the end of my workday, so I think I'm going to sneak off to the gym, and then my husband should be home in some amount of time, and then we got some errands to run, and then we gotta make dinner, and I wasn't able to sneak in any reading of my book today, so there's a lot I need to get done this afternoon, but we're gonna do our best. So let's go off to the gym and listen to some of How to Stop Time because it is due in four days. <laughs> A few moments later. Turns out the gym was closed because they don't have power right now. So that's a good time. Also, the groceries just got here, so the dog's probably going to freak out unless I can keep him distracted. Unless I can keep him distracted. Yeah, I was hoping to do like a hard workout today so I could wash my hair because it's really gross. But now I'm thinking I probably just need to wash my hair anyway. Man, having hair. Such a nuisance sometimes. Do you think that the bank is a coffee stand? I don't know, pop cups. Nice, Ari. Hello, good morning. I just finished The Sun Also Rises and I really enjoyed it. There are some problematic views, kind of the general racist, anti-Semitic stuff you could expect from a book written in the 20s, but I think just based on what I remember from For, Who the, For Whom the Bell Tolls, I think Hemingway really changed his tune quite a bit after World War II and the uh, Spanish Civil War. So I'm not, I guess, as upset because this is his first novel. He was a much younger man when he wrote this. I do believe he changed and grew and evolved as he got older. So I'm not gonna ding too many points for having some problematic stuff in here, but it's just something to be aware of. But I found so many parts of this book painfully relatable. It's partying with your friends and realizing that like this isn't the kind of thing that can last forever. For me that was like my mid-20s. For them it's their mid-30s because they're all rich and have no jobs. But just the feeling of having these great experiences with your friends, but also having these tumultuous relationships, and it's just, it's so good. I really wish I could have read this book, like, in my mid-twenties when I was in the midst of, like, 
my life as a movie era. I feel like I really would have like connected to it hard then, but I still really enjoyed it now. I definitely five stars. I love Ernest Hemingway. I love his writing style. I love the way he constructs stories and characters and their relationships are so weird and complex, but like understandable and human. And I just, I love Ernest Hemingway. Definitely a good one to read. So another book ticked off my Bookopoly TBR. My next one is going to be that true crime novel, While Idaho Was Sleeping. So I will check back in when I have read some of that. I have no idea how long it is. I, hopefully it's fairly short. Hopefully it is good and not too graphic. So I checked the gym's Facebook page this morning and they are still closed for that power outage. I guess it's like, the main line from the road is messed up. So it's like taking them a while to get it repaired or fixed or whatever and get somebody out there to do it. So I'm gonna do something I haven't done since lockdown and that is go on a jog with the dog because I need to go, I need to do something. Like since I've been working remote, the gym has kind of become my leave. <laughs> Otherwise, I would just spend hours and hours and hours all in the same room and that is not healthy or good for you. So I just got done with like a midday meeting. It's like one o'clock now. I'm going to start some rice for lunch and then go out and do like a mile jog, walk, run thing. Like, I know a mile isn't a lot, but like, I just, I hate running. And I guess when I come back, I'll do some like squats and I guess air squats and planks and whatnot. But I need to get some movement in my day. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I only ran like 60% of that. Like, I'm, I'm not in bad shape. Like... I can do 45 minutes on the stair stepper. I can do hours of hiking and walking, but 12 minutes of running? Forget it. Jesus, I hate running. Good morning. I am about a third of the way into While Idaho Slept. It's hard for me to say that I'm like enjoying this book. It's gut-wrenching uh, to learn more about these victims and their lives and how they were involved on campus and I, I'm even struggling to like verbalize it just because like Moscow was such a special time in my life like being at the University of Idaho being involved in the Greek system it's just so heartbreaking to think that these girls or I guess these victims were murdered during one of the best times of their lives. I will say that it's definitely weird to read about like a town and a community that is like so important to you from a third person perspective. Like this author did not go to University of Idaho, was not involved in the Greek system, and there's a lot of like small things. Like I just have so many small little nitpicks that I'm going to share now because I, I got it. I got it. They're bugging me so bad. So in the first chapter, he's setting up the, the night of the murder. Two of the victims had been out at a really popular bar in Moscow called the Corner Club, and he was talking about how, you know, they were out at the Corner Club. That is a really popular bar for students in Greek life and whatever, hanging out with people they probably know, and drinking bottles of beer, which is like... Yes, you can order beer out of a bottle at the Corner Club, but the thing the Corner Club is known for is these 32 ounce plastic tubs that are the same price as a bottle or a can of beer. So like no one orders canned or bottled beer there. You always get draft beer because it's so, so much cheaper. Also, they haven't cleaned the taps in probably 40 years. So I think it adds like a little special flavor to <laughs> to the draft beer. Another one is 
so I guess just for context, the sorority I lived in for three of the four years I was in, I was at University of Idaho, was across a field from the off-campus house where the victims were murdered. And that field is called the Lower 40. For some reason in this book, he's calling it the Band Field which I'd never heard it called that. I like asked some of my friends if they had ever heard it called that and they said, no, it's always been the lower 40. For what reason? Don't know, but it's the lower 40. <laughs> and then I guess just some fundamental misunderstandings about the Greek system and how it functions and works, which I think I would have thought he would have spent a little more time like trying to understand it considering all four victims were a part of the Greek system and like were involved in the Greek system. So those are like my super nitpicky things, but I am enthralled by this book. He is definitely like weaving a narrative into this story that I guess I didn't necessarily get when I was like following it at the time just because you're getting information in such a disjointed and sometimes not truthful way. And I did just look up how the progress of the trial is going because like, spoiler alert, they do find the guy and he is gonna be put on trial for the death penalty. During the arraignment, they had set a trial date for October 2nd and then he waived his right to a speedy trial. So it could be years down the line before they actually have his trial, which is really unfortunate. So, but yeah, it's it's just weird. I still have a lot of weird feelings about true crime as a whole. Like, I don't know. Like, it feels weird that this man who has no ties to the community, no ties to the victim, is going to profit off of their horrific deaths. It feels weird to engage in the voyeurism of, like, the investigation. And, I don't know, it's just, it's weird. I don't know. It's very, very strange. I don't know how to feel about it. But yeah, on to like a brighter note, <laughs> I am I'm about 90% done with How to Stop Time. It's like ramping up now. So our main character who is like not immortal, but just like lives a really long time and ages really slowly. He is involved in this society of other people like him. And it's starting to come out that this society might be a little less altruistic like we're starting to get some hints that something's going on i mean i guess we've been getting hints like we're in the last 90 per or 10 percent now so like i have a feeling something's gonna come to light it's good i think when i'm done i will do like a full rundown of like all my thoughts and feelings but so far we're enjoying it <laughs> hello it is wednesday i think i checked in this morning so i think we're we're on the same day nat from nerdy nat reads is doing some sprints for a readathon she's taking part in and my husband's not home yet so i figure might as well also i did this makeup look for like an intro clip to a vlog and i don't know if i like it i just i'm so bad at eyeliner like i tried to do just like a little baby wing i just i just i don't like don't like eyeliner not a fan but I am a fan of reading sprints and partaking in them. And I am pretty well enjoying my book so far. So let's do some reading sprints. Oh hey, I just finished listening to How to Stop Time while I was like working on some other stuff for work and it's just, it's so sweet. And like, I don't know what it is about like me and Matt Haig, but I seem to come across his books at like just the perfect time that I need that book. <laughs> Like, in the Midnight Library, just the themes of you have so many options open to you, it all seems so overwhelming, are you doing the right thing, are you making the life right life choice, you could have done so many different things with your life, and then at the end just being like comforted in a warm blanket of whatever you choose is the right life for you. And then this one, like, the main character is someone who's been alive for a really long time, he's seen so much of the world, he's not quite sure 
what the point of the future is, but then like at the end getting this again comforting warm blanket theme of the future is the people you love and the people you surround yourself with. The rest is just kind of fluff. Yes, history will seem to be repeating itself. It doesn't matter. And like, again, not very nuanced, not particularly groundbreaking, but it just, it feels like a warm hug. Just a warm blanket of a theme that 30 year old, I guess I'm not 30, 29 year old Adriana just really needed. The same way 25 year old Adriana really needed the Midnight Library. So again, I'm just, I'm not gonna like forcefully go back and try to read Matt, read Matt Haig's. At this point, I'm convinced it's like a universe thing. Like the universe will let me know when it is time to read another Matt Haig. And we will see if I continue on with this trend of getting the exact correct story I need at the right time. The only thing keeping me from probably giving this five stars is I was just not very good at reading it. I like took basically a week long break while I was in Moab. And so that definitely made the story feel like much longer and disjointed than it probably would have had I read it all like sequentially and not taken like a big gap in the middle. So I'm probably going to stick with four stars for now, but I think at some point, this one I do think I could reread physically and not be worried about the theming not hitting the same uh, at a different age. Cause I think this is probably a theme that I could stick with for a while. <laughs> Definitely a good one. And you know, speaking of spending time with my loved ones, I think it's just about noon. I think I'm gonna go try to meet my dad at the gym and get in a little workout. It's a beautiful day outside. So I'm looking forward to this walk to the gym. Actually, before I head off to the gym, it's October 19th. That puts me with 12 days left in the readathon. I still, I'm a good chunk of the way through While Idaho Sleeps. I'm not super concerned about that, but I have two more books left after that. Lucky Red and King of Scars. I think what I want to do is get the audiobook version of Lucky Red and have that be my next audiobook. Because I still have one credit on Libro FM for when I like signed up to get a another book. I got two credits when I like signed up to do it. So I have a credit on Libro FM. I could get the audiobook of Lucky Red and listen to that. And that would give me more time to read King of Scars because that is a chunky chunky book. So I think that sounds like a good plan. So I'm going to buy Lucky Red by Claudia Cravens. And that will be my audiobook for the next 12 days. But it is now 11.50. I need to get dressed to go to the gym. I need my dad. Okay, I'm like two thirds into While Idaho Slept Now and this book has me in a chokehold. I don't think I've really learned anything new about the case, but just like really going through and fleshing out all of these people as people is definitely, it's enthralling and crazy. And what I liked about like the first mostly two thirds of this book is he, the author really does like spend all of that time talking about the victims and their lives and their relationships with their families and each other and their friends. And they just seemed like the most normal group of U of I students. Like I knew, I knew people exactly like them. And it's just so heartbreaking to see I guess to really dive into their story as humans, as people, as kids, super, super interesting. And now we're kind of transitioning into the murderer's life and kind of what he has going on. And again, just super, super crazy, like to dig into his mindset, I guess, how he grew up, a bullied loner kid. And it's just like, this has gotta be one of the most like cliche things to ever happen. <laughs> I mean, I hate to describe it as a cliche. It's a horrible like incident, but like this murderer was, you know, a bullied weird kid who grew up. And then all of our victims were these very popular, well-liked, sociable, you know, conventionally attractive. So it just, it just sucks because like 
up into this point, we still don't really have like a solid motive from the murderer because they haven't had the trial yet or whatever else. So we don't know what the prosecution is really gonna try to throw on him as a motive, but just like laying that out as like, he was the weird loner kid who whatever, whatever, and attacked like these four beautiful, popular kids. It just, I would just hate, not that like a motive actually like justifies anything, but it would just suck for the motive of the murder of these four great kids to be that he was jealous of how cool and popular they were. Like that just seems really horrible in a way that's like hard to wrap your mind around. I don't know. It's, I mean, this is why I don't like read true crime. I just, it breaks my heart. Okay, I have like 20 pages left of While Idaho Slept, but like, I still need to work today. <laughs> I've had a pretty like busy-ish morning, so that's kept me like engaged in meetings and whatnot. But now that like, it's a little more freeform time, I think I need to physically remove myself from my book. I also do need to run a couple errands in town. So I am going to pack up my laptop and head to the coffee shop to go get some work done so I am not distracted by my book being there. So let's go to the coffee shop. All right, I just got out of the gym and as I was exiting, I saw a tweet from James Rollins announcing the title of the new Sigma Force book. Got some good work done at the coffee shop, got in my workout. I think now I can go finish while Idaho slept. Very excited about it. And also, the new Sigma Force book coming out. He said next summer? Is that that's summer 2024 or summer 2025? I don't know. Either way, I'm excited. So I just finished while Idaho slept and it is a very well written and well constructed and I think respectful narrative on the murders. I don't think I've heard anything like from the family. I don't know if he has the okay from the any of the families. I don't know about the ethics of this book but as far as reading it I found it to be not too graphic and not like reveling in the violence and I think it spent an appropriate amount of time on the victim's life versus the alleged, I guess it's still alleged at this point. I guess he hasn't been proven guilty yet, but like, it seems there's a lot of evidence. There's a lot of stuff going on. Anyway, very good book. I still feel very weird about true crime in general, but I, if you are a true crime fan, I would definitely recommend it. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to rate it just because I have so many weird feelings about true crime. But I will be writing my review on Nick Alley for it at some point. But moving on to happier books. Happier? Not happier. A different book. I'm about 30% into the audiobook of Lucky Red. This is a historical fiction on a young woman who goes to move with her dad to Kansas. Her dad dies along the way and she ends up in Dodge City which I don't know where that is. Is that in Kansas? I do not know the Midwest that well. Yeah, okay, it is in Kansas. So she ends up in Dodge City and starts working as a prostitute. And so far it seems, she seems to just be vibing with this whole prostitute gig. I don't know if this is gonna be a revenge plot or not. <laughs> I kind of forced this in as a revenge plot because I needed some sort of revenge something for my bookopoly, but it seems like it could, there could be revenge. It's a, like a historical fiction, Western, there, there could be something there. We're, we, we don't know, we're only 30% in. There could be revengey things coming up. So I don't know. I'm enjoying it. I think it is, it's pretty fun. I, I do love a Western. I love a Western, Old West setting. Saloons, madams, deputies. It's a good time. So because I finished my eyeball read, I will be starting a new eyeball read and that is the last book on my Bookopoly TBR, which is exciting. And that is King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. 
I have a physical copy of it. I'm borrowing it from the library and reading it on my e-reader because this is easier to pick up and carry around than the physical book because this big and chunky. So I am excited to start digging into that, but first I'm going to take a shower because I skipped doing that to finish my other book. <laughs> Good morning. It is Saturday. I am 13% into King of Scars. We're doing good. It's so fun to jump back into this world and the Grisha and just all the things. It's very fun. I'm enjoying it immensely. But I guess I will see why everybody hates this book so much, hopefully. Well, I don't know. Hopefully not. Hopefully. Hopefully I love it. <laughs> but I know most people do not like this book. In other plans today on this fine fall Saturday morning, I want to hit up the farmer's market. We're going to drive over to a nearby city and my husband wants to test drive a new car. So we'll try that out. Uh, do a Costco run. Just kind of kind of be a running around explorey day. So probably try to go get like a nice lunch while we're over there because they have a lot nicer restaurants than we do. Should be a good time. A Chilean. A while to come round to the idea, but I've included some amenities on the ship that I think will please them. Good morning. My husband and I stayed up entirely too late last night just talking and hanging out, and because I'm at home, I can't sleep in. <laughs> So I've been up since like seven-ish. I've gotten some good reading done and fortunately my husband was able to go back to sleep. So I kind of have some quiet time to just do more reading. Hello, hello. It is the end of another Sunday. I feel like I did a lot of reading on King of Scars this weekend, but the book is so long and chunky, it's hard to like actually see any real progress and like comment on what is going on, but I'm still very much enjoying it. Trip and I did go on a bit of a hot girl walk today, which I think brought me to 50% of Lucky Red. So I think I'm definitely ready for another check-in there. A lot has happened, a lot has gone down. Our main gal is having a bit of a sapphic awakening, if you will, and that has been really fun to follow along. Again, not really getting big revenge vibes from this story. You know, the best revenge is life well lived. And hopefully, hopefully our gal Bridget will get to live her, her true best life at some point here in the near future. But yeah, about halfway through Lucky Red, about 30% into King of Scars. So I will be picking up both of those in my vlog next week. So thanks so much for watching and I will catch you on the next one.